welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me this week. I really appreciate it. As always, we get straight into the action. And this week's episode, we'll be covering the previously advertised and much anticipated painting of the digital camouflage on the awesome SU27 UB by Great Wall Hobby in 148 scale. So what you see me doing here is removing any sort of dirt, grime, grease that's managed to find itself on the kit through the building process and sometimes through the molding process as well. And to do this I've just used rubbing alcohol on a paper towel and just in case of wiping the whole aircraft down as best you can, covering all the surfaces just to make sure that it's clean for painting. Now the reason I do this is because um, I'm going to be doing quite a lot of masking as we do with most of our builds and I don't want the paint to come up when lifting the masking tape away so this just allows a, a clean surface for this primer to stick to and then when I pull up all the uh, masks which there are plenty of I can assure you it doesn't take the paint with it and cause me a whole heck of or a whole hell of, um, of heartache. So we are nice and clean just allow it to dry which doesn't take long because it's rubbing alcohol. So uh, for priming the aircraft I'll be using Mr Hobby's Mr Finishing Surfacer 1500 white. This stuff really is excellent, it's very easy to control in the airbrush. The mix ratio is one part primer to three parts um, levelling thinner. Just a case of building up as always, slowly but surely the layers. No need to hose it on. This stuff is pretty forgiving though if you do sort of find yourself loitering in a, in a single area at any one time. So I fast forwarded this action because uh, we all know how to paint. And it's just a case of working methodically, slowly and carefully throughout the whole of the kit, giving it a nice coating. You don't need to go too mad though. Just a nice covering as you can see there. It doesn't need to be crazy. And then we keep the detail. Voila, one primed Sukhoi SU-27. So now it's just a case of looking all over the, uh, the kit to see if there's any areas that need filling, because this shows it up nicely. Any areas that need sanding, any sort of abnormalities or anything like that. So here you can see just about make out by the cockpit. Oh, there we go, better view. It did speckle a little bit. I, I must have had the pressure a little bit too high. I think I was spraying at about 220 PSI, maybe a little bit high. So you, it, this happens. So it's just a case of getting a, a nice smooth sanding stick and just rubbing those bits away because this isn't our final um, color. So it doesn't matter if there's little bits uh, sort of rubbed away. But here I'm using a, a nice fine sanding stick and it's just a case of rubbing. I'd, I'd like to rub the whole aircraft over just to get a nice smooth surface. Still provides a great key for the paint to stick to but it just gives the paint a, a, the best chance possible at having a nice smooth finish. So it's just a case of checking it over, making sure I'm happy with the surface before applying paint. Now as I previously said, it's once you've got the primer on, it does show up any areas that may need filling as is being pointed out here where the uh, engines join the main air airframe. So I shall fill those gaps and those bits there using a nice, I think, it, I think it's shown in just a moment, a nice putty, water-based putty just to uh, fill those lines in before we get down to, uh, all those seam lines just before we get down to the final paint job. So as just, I just stated, it's using perfect plastic putty. This is the Deluxe Materials product. I really like this stuff of small seam lines. It's not great for big seam lines or anything majorly structural. This stuff is, is there for the small fine stuff because it's water-based. So as you can see, you can just roughly apply it. And it works well into all the gaps. It may look a bit messy at this stage, but we'll, we'll run along with a Q-tip or a cotton bud in a moment, as we will see just to make sure that it gets into the seam lines and we can make it good thereafter. So just a quick dab of the cotton bud or Q-tip into some water, don't need to be excessive with it. And then it's just a case of running it over the area like so and as if by magic, it fills the area beautifully. And also you get a little bit of a residue build up on the um, cotton bud so you can use that to fill the other areas and it just, it never ceases to amaze me how well this comes up. And it's just a case of process of running 
or methodically working through the whole aircraft, making sure there's no seam lines that we don't want or any, any nasties visible like so. Just while we're doing this, I'd like to thank you all very much for liking and subscribing to the channel. It never ceases to amaze me as I watch the numbers go up each week of how many people are following me along on this journey. I can't thank you enough. It really, really means the world to me. So moving on now, there's a little bit of dust from where I sanded. it. So again, it's just a case of get a cloth. Don't put rubbing alcohol on it this time because it will pull away the primer. Just get a damp cloth. Just run it over just to make sure there's no more dust. It may seem a bit finicky and over the top, but really if you want a good, nice, smooth surface, I can't recommend doing this enough. It only takes a few minutes. Make sure or allow it to dry afterwards and you'll thank yourself later on. I find it best to use a cloth like so rather than tissue for this so you don't get any residue left over. So onto the bottom side. Blue. So this was a mix of Mr. Color 323 and 156, as you can see. It was mainly uh, using the white with just a tiny, tiny dab of the blue and then just mixing to taste. I didn't have an exact ratio to pass on, I'm afraid, but using your reference photos, mix it up and then you'll get a rough idea of, or you get a very good idea actually of where you need to be. Again, using Mr. Hobby self-leveling thinner I think that was more of a case of uh, one part paint to two parts thinner. But again, test it out on a piece of plastic just to get the flow right. And again, just a case of working my way through the whole of the undersides. Now the eagle eye view will notice that I haven't masked up yet. That is because this is the bottom layer and you, we don't need to be too careful because we can mask up after that and paint the top side afterwards and that will be where we need to get things correct with this. So here we go, took me about half an hour to get good coverage. It does look a bit gaudy, the blue on this. Now I think this is the camera and the lighting at the time. It's a bit more of a sky blue in reality. But as you can see, they're really happy with the finish, nice and smooth. And no blemishes and issues. So that's the underside, all looking very good. Next up, it was a case of building the tail planes. Again, excellent detail as has become the norm with this kit. And they click together really, really nicely. I haven't showed you every part of the building process because obviously, A, it's nice to have a little surprise when you come to it and B, a lot of it's fairly mundane and standard stuff. Now I'm using Revel's um, normal cement here some people can get snotty about this or snobby and say, oh no, it's not so great. But for this sort of thing, it's just perfect with a thin applicator and I didn't need to use plastic weld or anything like this or the Tamiya Extra Thin. It was just nice to have it in place and click into position like so and allow it to dry over the next hour or so. It really worked really perfectly as an applicator for this situation. There we go, looking lovely, very happy with that. Okay, next up was doing the darker blue part of the, uh, the, the main base of the color of the aircraft. So that was Mr. Hobby number 34, and again using Mr. Color self-leveling thinner. And it, again, it's just a case of building up the layers, working through around the cockpits. Now, the reason I'm holding the cockpit is because Wally here decided that he had that he wouldn't um, wouldn't stick it down pro properly. Well, I stuck it down with um, PVA glue, and it didn't quite do the job. I do stick it down a bit later on because it's quite ridiculous having to hold it down with my hand. But as you can see, there's some masking tape on the lower side, just so that I don't spray over the the lighter, the sky blue areas. And here we go, I've, I've fast forwarded through to pretty much completion of the top side spraying. This is a darker blue, and then we get another dark blue and a gray that all goes part of the Ukraine Air Force. As you can see here, digital camo colors. 
So next up, it was time to apply the digital uh, masks for the kit, and this is from Foxbot. There is um, another masking company that do it, the Galaxy, I believe it is, but trying to get hold of them in the UK is just was a nightmare, so I managed to get hold of these Foxbot ones. The only slight drawback with the Foxbot ones, it doesn't give you the decals, or sorry, the decals, the, um, the masks for the for the engine bits that needed to be masked up, so I'll have to do those by hand. But basically, it gives you a colour chart, and also these numbers are all in the colours that they should be, and then you have to correlate them up with the almost like jigsaw puzzle on the other side. So B6, you go over, uh, find your sheet, sheet B, pick up uh, mask number six, and apply it to the aircraft, like so. The camera just about picking it out here. It's a case of pulling this up and applying very carefully and my goodness me, please take your time with this. Better to get it right first time and then to realize a bit down the line that it hasn't gone right. So it's just a case, it's a very delicate process. I think the whole of the top side masking took me about five, maybe six hours to complete. And it does make you, uh, it does make your eyes go funny. So I do have regular breaks doing it just to keep your concentration up. And it's just a case of cross referring, checking and double checking. It's, it's a very simple process. It's just a shade time consuming and you have to be careful with it. And also as can be seen where this has been cut, it's probably been cut by a cricket cutter or something like that. Some of the areas weren't cut quite as well as one would hope for. So what I ended up using was taking out the centers and using the outer sides um, to fill in basically. And it'll, this will make sense as you watch the video, uh, the, the video through. So okay, so getting B8, which is gray. Locating that, which is the bit in front of you, pulling out the mask and then applying it to the kit part. I did refine this down to not having to remove the center parts as I went along. There you go, nice and gentle, not pulling, ripping or tearing anything. Take your time, I cannot emphasize that enough. Now this is fiddly and it, it, it does, as I say, it does, <laughs> the Q word of the day being patient, it is fiddly and it can sort of make you sort of <laughs> think, what am I doing here? But just trust the process, go with it. You'll be very happy at the end. Just basically here lining it up and getting an eye for it. And as you go along, you tend to find yourself getting into a rhythm, I would say, and it, it becomes a quicker process. But I'd far rather do this than getting bits of masking tape and having to cut out all the, the tiny bits and then having to cross refer, etc., etc. There we go, sticks down nicely. And I'll cut away the edges just so we get a full, uh, so we can spray it properly because otherwise uh, there'll be parts of the wingtip here that won't be covered by the gray. As again, will become evident as the video moves along. I will say it was quite good. It comes with instructions, the Foxbot um, masks, and uh, they, they say proceed a bit more cautiously than you probably have to. If you've done a good paint job, this stuff isn't gonna pull your paint up. Which is why, again, I was so careful with making sure that I got the base right for the paint job. These masks are not too sticky. I'd say they're a little bit less sticky than Tamiya masking tape. So if that gives you an idea. So there we go. We're, we've got the, uh, the Foxbot mask on. I'm going to add some Tamiya masking tape around the side because obviously we don't want overspray because that seriously pisses me off when that happens. It's for something that's so simple that causes so much of a fallout afterwards if you get overspray. So do take your time, like I say, and just uh, mask the rest of the parts. And I found that spraying with low pressure really helps as well, because obviously you're not blasting it away. Then you can, again, as we always do, like so, just build up a fine layer, 
get something for it as a key and then you can go from there. Otherwise, if you blast if you blast it in, you're gonna get build up around the edge of the mask and um, that's not gonna look so great. I do get it in parts uh, of this um, of the kit, a little bit of build up around the mask, but it was just a case of sanding it away with a super smooth or super fine sanding stick and it leveled it up nicely. So here's me not again, not listening to my own um, preachings of not putting extra masking tape around the side. I think it was just basically down to the pressure was so low, I knew it wasn't going to, uh, wasn't going to affect it, but I don't recommend it. And I think going further on through the episode, you will see that I, I take up the tactic of using masking tape around the edge, just purely for the fact that I know I'll have a heart attack if I get overspray on it and be extremely cross with myself for not listening to my own um, advice. <clears throat> Here comes the good bit. We all love a bit of Dima um, peeling away the masking. And as you can see, it just looks great. Really happy with it. Peels away beautifully, no complaints there. Part one of about 30. So yes, I can tell you it takes a long time. I was up very late into the night doing this. This is just doing one of the wing pylons. You actually even get a mask to go around the missile pylon on the, on the wing tips, it's that good. Now you can see I've masked up the sort of further surrounding area just to avoid me upsetting myself further down the line. And if you're anything like me and you just love peeling the masking tape away, then this episode's for you because I show it a lot. The nice end result, which to me is by far one of the, my favorite parts of building um, the kits is um, peeling away the masking tape. Again, gently, gently, don't rip it away because that will increase the chances of peeling up the uh, paint underneath. Just be gentle with this. And the end result, as you can see, well, I think without shouting my own trumpet, is a thing of beauty. Another way of um, lifting this is to use a, a toothpick as well, because that reduces the risk of um, picking away at the paint that's around the edge of where you're trying to lift up. Which fortunately didn't happen in this case, but I quickly decided that using a toothpick might be a smarter idea. And sometimes just good old hands will get rid of it for you. Just while we're going through this process, I'll uh, change the subject slightly and thank everyone yet uh, again for just being wonderful and supporting me and this channel. I really, really appreciate it. I'm over 200 subscribers and now it's just insane. I don't know how that's happened, but uh, thank you so much. If you stumbled across this and you like what you see, I would be truly humbled if you would hit the like, subscribe and notifications buttons. Why not join me with the rest of the build? You're here now. Next week's will be the start of the engines, which will be fun in games. A little bit apprehensive about doing that because I've never really sort of done that thing before. But anyway, back to the subject. Oh, all oh, the masking has been removed and look at that looking lovely and crisp the digital camo on this is just so cool love it no ridges nothing absolutely perfect very happy with that so after probably i think this this center bit was three separate parts. I had to cut it into three separate parts just to get it all the way across. This was probably the trickiest part, but I managed to, you know, with, with about half an hour, I think it took me and careful placing, just worked my way methodically through it and the whole gray piece comes off in one, in one strip. Again, very satisfying when it all comes up and it's all absolutely bang on, which it was on this, 
on this occasion. In fact, it was throughout the whole of the uh, masking process, to be honest with you. Really very well done by Foxbot deck, um, by Foxbot. I can't really, um, haven't really got anything bad to say about it. Okay, yeah, they could have probably done what um, Galaxy have done and, and added a few more um, masks for the engine bits and other bits and pieces around the kit. But there's nothing I can't do with a bit of masking tape myself or a bit of humbral mask goal. So um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hate on them for that. Plus it was, it was pretty cheap as well. I think this mask was something like six UK pounds, which considering it does the whole, you know, all the digital and gives you a, uh, a paint, um, what am I thinking of here? It gives you a, a paint guide as well. You can't really knock that. It's just a case working through getting all the little bits out from the middle as well. I just found this super satisfying, watching it all come together. I've just been really happy with, a, with the final end product. You know, I'm not a professional builder, so you know every time something something goes right for me, I, I get quite happy. I will be honest with you, because half the time I'm expecting sort of my lack of experience to maybe show through and something to go wrong. So I was I was very happy. Okay, now it's onto the dark blue. I'm not sure if I show, no, nope, I haven't showed what the paint mixture was for this. Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head while I'm videoing what it was. It was just a dark blue uh, with a hint of white thrown in just to uh, just to take the edge off. Again, using Mr. Hobby paints. If, you, if you're really keen to know, drop me a line um, on the channel and I will go and have a look and let you know. I'm trying to get a little bit better with um, supplying what I'm using while I'm doing it has been pointed out to me a couple of times, quite rightly so, and in a positive fashion uh, through people's uh, messages that it helps. If it helps you guys, I'm all for it. I just apologize for not doing it on this occasion. So now our wobbly hands there, um, just a case of removing that mask. And this will be this uh, left tail plane completely finished and it will give you a good idea of, of, um, of how the rest of the, the kit will look. Whoever came up with this digital camouflage is a legend because it's just an awesome paint job. Really like it in the blue. As you can see, I thoroughly covered that with masking tape just to make sure I didn't get any overspray because going back and having to retry and do that gray with masking tape was not my idea of, um, of uh, I wasn't keen on it, let's put it like that. Do apologise if you're not into uh, watching the masking tape coming off. Kind of thing I really enjoy. I think there's quite a few out there that do like it, so I'm trying to cater to you. If this isn't your bag, do apologise. Next week we're on to engines and there'll be a lot of chrome and bits and pieces thrown in and some hot blue parts and purples and bits and pieces. I've been doing a bit of research. There doesn't seem to be a massive right or wrong answer for it. So a little bit of artistic but accurate licence will be used because I'm not going to make it look unrealistic. But all the different engine parts did look slightly different on these Sukhois. Anyway, I digress. I'm moving on to next week's episode already here. So there we go, one rear horizontal stab, all nice and finished. Very happy with that. Detail showing through nicely, crisp colors, perfectly masked, no ridges, everything just how I want it. So next up, it's uh, basically removing the mask on the stinger, as it's affectionately called, where the parachute is, is kept for the, when it comes into land and uh, needs that extra braking force. This is where the, uh, the braking chute is, is kept.
Now I haven't fast forwarded this process guys, just purely so you can get a good idea of, of roughly how this is going to look once it's completed. Now the reason for that is, is I must confess, I didn't, I don't know why, but I didn't do a video of the whole aircraft once all the masking was done. Don't ask me why I haven't done that, because I don't know. So I'm going to sort of allow you to hopefully enjoy the removing of this process so you get the two different blues and the greys. And then what I've, what you will see shortly and what I've included is, is just a little bit of the start of the masking for the engines. Now that's not to jump through into another episode or to step on that episode's toes. It's just purely because in that bit of video or film, um, it shows all the three uh, attributes to the, to the digital camouflage. So you get a rough idea of how it looks. I didn't want to leave it with this bit of, well, I've done all, done all the painting, but you guys can't see what it looks like until next week, because that's just dragging it out for, for no real reason. So what, once this bit's done, you'll get to see what the aircraft looks like. It's just a case of removing this masking tape now, and it will give you a rough idea of how the rest of the aircraft will look, and then, I'll then you'll get a better view going forwards. So do be there, do bear with me with this. If in the meantime you have any comments and suggestions for the channel, please do hit me up. As I'm building, as I'm moving along with this kit, I'm sort of starting already to think into what I'm going to build next. And to be honest with you, I haven't got a clue. So if you've got any ideas, it needs to be kind of 148 scale, probably a jet. I was thinking of the Zukimura F4. But again, I don't know why it's not available. The worldwide shipping problem, I don't know. But getting hold of the new release of Kimura F4 is proving very, very difficult. So I don't know. But I, I'm, I'm up for ideas, something a bit cool. I was thinking of maybe a Japanese Air Self Defense Force F15 in one of their cool colors. I don't know. Hit me up if you've got any suggestions, anyhow. So we go, all the blue showing nicely through there, the dark blue. Again, very happy with that. Worked beautifully. So here's what I was on about. I wasn't going to show this part until next week, but for some reason, like I say, I didn't show the whole aircraft. So this will just give you an eye, a quick glimpse of how the whole aircraft looks and moving forwards into the engine masking section. As you can see, it came out superbly. I was so pleased with it. I haven't shown the cockpit area. I, I, I can only humbly apologise guys, a um, bit of an error on my part, I don't know why it's occurred, you will get to see it of course, it's just not going to be in this episode, to be fair it's just these colours but round the nose, it's nothing spectacular or more spectacular than what you can already see. So it's just a case now here, I'm not going to go into this too deeply, it's just a case of getting thin bits of masking tape, I've used reference photos to work out where the engines start and finish and it's just a case of starting a bit of a process of masking that off. So with a minute of the video left to go, and if you're still with me, high five. Thanks so much for, for, for you know, staying on board. Really appreciate it. I thank you very much for liking and subscribing, and just thank you all so much for, for your support and, and kind words and words of encouragement that I've had. It really means the world to me. I suffer massively from anxiety, so there are days where I struggle to even pick up a kit. So your kind words and things like that really help me along. I, I, I really appreciate it greatly. So using Q-tip just to get into the corners and that, I'm trying not massively to commentate on this part. Do forgive me because it's going to get covered in greater detail in next week's episode. During um, the filming for next week's episode, because I've still got to do a bit more, I will try and ping in some pitch, uh, some viewing footage of the nose. Okay, guys, that brings us to an end of this episode. Thanks so much for tuning in. Tune in next week for the next episode to do with the engines. Thanks for everything. Really appreciate it. Hit the like and subscribe. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Let me know your thoughts. Have a great week. Happy modeling and goodbye.